Emma is a um, clinical psychology registrar at the University of Curtin, who is also undertaking a PhD. And Emma's going to talk to us today about personality and behavior changes in adults with brain tumors. So um, over to you, Emma. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present today. Um, so today I will be briefly going over two studies that are part of my PhD research that's on the topic of personality and behaviour changes in adults with a brain tumour and what interventions can best support patients and their carers to manage these changes. So firstly, just starting off with the definition because um, there's quite a lot of variability in how we might define personality and behaviour changes. Um, so I'm using the Diagnostic and Statistics Manual definition there. Um, and we know they're relatively common uh, amongst brain tumour patients with up to 67% of patients with a glioma reporting personality and behaviour changes. We also know they're really difficult to manage and quite challenging to address due to the varied causes of these changes. It can be um, a result of the location of the tumour or treatment or medication side effects or the really understandable emotional and psychological adjustment to receiving a diagnosis, as well as the um, daily stress of living with a brain tumour. So the first study I conducted was a scoping review to look at what literature and research has been conducted in this area already, what interventions have been tested for the management of personality and behaviour changes, and I'll summarise some of the key um, results here now. The findings were only five studies met um, the inclusion criteria, and all of them had relatively small sample sizes of less than 100 participants, and one of them was a single case study. Um, and they all looked at personality and behaviour changes that were um, like externalising behaviours or observable to, to others, such as anger or agitation or disinhibited uh, behaviours. All of the interventions contained an education component and um, used cognitive behavioural frameworks. So looking at the interaction between an individual's uh, thoughts, feelings and behaviours to better understand um, the context a behaviour is occurring in and the possible underlying unmet need to then inform what needs to change and what supports and what interventions are necessary. And these interventions were delivered by a range of health professionals, including clinical psychologists, nurses, and multidisciplinary teams. The um, interventions were participated by the um, patient on their own or with the patient and the carer. And they really varied in terms of um, the intensity with one of the interventions being um, quite brief at a two hour workshop and up to a, um, 12 to 14 sessions that were about an hour long. And the results from all of these interventions were they were um, effective in improving the targeted personality and behavior changes. And we were also interested in looking at if they improved um, outcomes for carers when they were also a participant. And in two studies, they did. They reduced um, carer distress and improved knowledge of um, strategies to use to support patients. So where to from here? The next um, phase will be conducting interviews with patients, carers, family members and health professionals to better understand these three aims. So um, interested in what current practice looks like when a patient experiences these changes, what does their journey to support involve um, and what are some of the difficulties associated with managing personality and behaviour changes and the really big area of focus is how can we better uh, support our patients and carers experiencing these changes. So if you have any questions or it's something you may be interested in participating in, I'd love to hear from you. That's my um, email address down in the bottom left-hand corner and I'll hand back over to Harry. Thank you.